Now, let's go to the book of uh, Matthew and, um, and check out what the Lord has there for us. And, uh, you know, I cannot stress so much on this. In our generation, we have a lot of false doctrines going up and down. It's only during prayer that one can ask the Lord for grace to differentiate, you know, between the false doctrine and the correct doctrine. And the Spirit of God will guide you. Uh, Matthew chapter 26 from verse 38. And then we read 38, and then we go to verse 40 to 41. I read the word of the Lord. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here, and watch with me. So the Lord commanded them to wait, and wait, and watch with him. Verse 40. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What? Could ye not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. This is one of the reasons we need to pray. The Lord commanded us to pray. So that we will not enter into temptation. The spirit is strong, willing, but the flesh is weak. We know that the flesh is one of the enemies of humanity. The flesh wants comfort every time. The flesh does not want to pay the price in prayer. The price to seek the face of the Lord. The flesh just wants relaxation, easygoing stuff. But the Lord Jesus is saying, we need to watch and pray. It is a command from the Lord. And when we don't pray, we cannot move the power of God. When we pray, we see the power of God moving. I'll give you an, uh, I'll give you, I'll give you an uh, example here. You, you know, because when you pray, you receive a lot, a lot of revelation from the Lord. When you don't pray, the devil can take away what belongs to you. If we go to the scriptures, uh, we can see the life of uh, Brother Peter. Brother Peter, when he was in Joppa, he was in the house of Simon the Tanner. And the Bible said that he was there meditating. He was in that mood of prayer. And in that mood of prayer, he received revelation. He received that vision that the Lord gave to him concerning ministering to the Gentiles, taking the gospel to the Gentiles, waiting on the man that Cornelius will send from Joppa. In the mood of prayer, we can receive revelation. That's why we need to pray. When we don't pray, we don't move the hand of God. A young believer needs to pray to strengthen his faith. An older believer is supposed to pray to be strong also in faith. You need to pray for other people also. We are coming to that uh, um, uh, after this shortly. Another thing I want to let you know is that when we pray, Certain things happen in the spirit realm that in the physical realm we may not even get answered to. For instance, I remember I've told this story many times when I was um, about travel and when I was getting ready to travel to Europe to Sweden, I have finished going for my interview. I went to the Swedish embassy. I submitted every document. I answered their questions. One night, I got up to pray. Prayer is very important. One night, I got up to pray. And when I was in that prayer, I had a beautiful time in the presence of the Lord. I remember reading my Bible. And after that, I slept off. Something happened. I had a very big dream. Beautiful. I call it a huge big dream. That dream made an impact in my life. I found myself in a room, very lighted room. Remember, that was after prayer. 
I saw myself in that lighted room. Lo and behold, I saw a big table with a big loaf of bread. Very big bread on the big table. I've never seen that type of bread before. And I was so excited in that dream. Oh, I was rejoicing, thanking God for the loaf of bread. Because it was done on me that the bread belonged to me. So, and I looked and behold, there was something like a hand lifting the underneath of the bread. And I saw a big house fly feeding on my bread. And I started crying in that room. I said, oh Lord, how is it that this my bread is in this particular situation? A fly is feeding on my bread. I don't like it. And as I was in that mood, I heard a voice, audible voice in my ears. The devil wants to steal your blessing. The devil wants to steal your blessing. And I woke up. So, the Lord spoke to me that the devil wanted to steal my blessing. And I was contemplating. I said, Lord, can you speak to me more? How is it that the devil wants to steal my blessing? And it came into my mind that I was petitioning the Lord about my travel to, to Europe for my Bible college training. And the devil did not want it to go through. And then I started saying, okay, what I'm going to do, I'm going to add prayer and add fasting to my petition. I will intensify in prayer. To summarize this long story, God made a way when there seemed to be no way. I went to my office and I even got a phone call from Swedish embassy. They say, hey, is this uh, Edward Irobi? I say, yes, this is Edward. Uh, Mr. Irobi, we are sorry to tell you that your visa has been denied. I said, oh, Lord. Lord, I prayed. I prayed. So I prayed. The visa was denied. I said, Lord, I'm not giving up. That's where the prevailing aspect of prayer comes in. Lord, I'm not giving up. I believe in you. With you, nothing shall be impossible. I thank God for my wife. Then she was my fiancée, you know. So I told her about the scenario. And she told me, oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? So she gave me a very good counsel. And I followed that counsel that she gave to me. Because I was trusting the Lord to, you know, make a way where there seemed to be no way. And immediately I took the counsel of my wife and then I did as she directed me. I got a breakthrough. How did it happen? The Swedish government, the Swedish embassy wanted a certain amount for my tuition for my upkeep in Sweden, I didn't have it. And by the provision of God's grace and the Lord speaking to me through my wife then, and I say, Lord, what do you want me to do? The Lord brought a businessman and that business, businessman said, Edward, what is the problem? You're supposed to have gone back to school. You're supposed to have traveled, but you are still here. I told him, sir, this is the situation. Money is needed for my upkeep, for my tuition, and so on. And this man, to summarize the long story, God touched him and he said, you have to go with my accountant to the bank and let the bank release this amount of money that you need. And the bank released that amount of money. And that money was exactly the same thing that the uh, institution in Sweden and the Swedish immigration needed. And that was how I got my resident permit to move to Sweden. What am I trying to say? Prevailing prayer is not just, you know, you just pray once, Lord, you understand, you throw it away. No. The whole thing is, you have your faith today. You have your faith to know tomorrow. You have your faith next week. Continue to pray. The Lord answers prayer until the answer comes. You don't give up. Jesus.